deemed the single biggest global ransomware attack on record. Hundreds of companies are scrambling after the ransomware group known as Our Evil attacked software supplier Kaseya ahead of the holiday weekend. Now that group is offering a universal decryptor software key to fix the hack in exchange for $70 million in cryptocurrency. Joining us now is cybersecurity expert and privacy attorney Lisa Garber. Lisa, good morning. Thanks for being here. This cyber attack on Kaseya impacted at least 17 countries. What kind of businesses were targeted and now impacted? Good morning. Great to see you, Scott. The impact and ripple effect of this ransomware attack cannot be overstated. Really what happened is Kaseya is a Florida-based software management company, which supplies IT remote software management to managed service providers all over the world. They then give those updates to their clients, which range from <clears throat> grocery stores to financial institutions, to dental offices, to travel companies, and also public agencies. So really this impact was all over the world, every continent, and all different types of businesses, not just large, but also small. So Lisa, the group that's supposedly behind this is Russian group, the same one responsible for the JBS Foods hack we experienced just last month is what reporting is right now. Any indication as to what the motive was behind these attacks, especially since they occurred back to back? Our evil is based in Russia. They've been around for a couple of years. And really what we can say to start is this is a money making machine. Ransomware as a service is very valuable. They're able to ask ransoms in the range from a couple thousand dollars to a couple million dollars. In this case, they are asking every business involved for different amounts of money. As you mentioned, they also are offering an option for $70 million for a universal decryptor key. But really, there's also the political underbelly of this controversy, which is Russia is harboring these ransomware criminal syndicates and essentially allowing them to operate without any penalty. So really, the motivations could stem from money making, but also political activity as well. Well, it appears the ransomware attacks are getting bigger in some respects. So, Lisa, are these attacks becoming more sophisticated or are the cybersecurity systems just that weak? Such a great question. Ransomware has been one of the hottest types of cyber attacks for the past couple of years. It's just been growing exponentially. And it's also, it's a problem of cybersecurity not being taken seriously enough, especially in the United States being looked at as just a budget line item for different kinds of businesses who think they just won't get targeted as victims. But in the end, this attack really opens our eyes to how sophisticated these criminal syndicate groups are. We cannot overstate how sophisticated this vulnerability finding was. Essentially what happened is they found a hole in the code and were able to send out this malware through it through updates. And as we've seen, Kaseya has not been able to release the patch yet. They have all different kinds of security agencies working with them, including the FBI, but still these companies are down. President Biden's facing pressure to stop the cyber attacks from occurring. Uh, we've heard that from all angles. What can the U.S. really do today to prevent future attacks, especially because uh, the Russians continue to say, well, it's, it's not the government, it's a group that just may happen to be in Russia. Right, exactly. Part of this is the United States being proactive about cybersecurity, which certainly Biden's proposed infrastructure bill does with millions of dollars being proposed, infrastructure looking at key elements of cybersecurity agencies working together with the private sector. But then we look at the political controversies as well, we really need the international community to come together and deal with the reckoning of these kind of cyber attacks. And whether it's Russia allowing these companies to operate and not get charged, there are also questions of whether Russia benefits from allowing these syndicates to help them with spying missions, with espionage. So there's a couple different moving pieces to this controversy. Sanctions may help, but the U.S. has to take a serious proactive stance for cybersecurity. Yeah, a global solution could be key there. Lisa Garber, thank you so much for joining us on the National Desk. We appreciate your time.